Hello, True Femme community. So as promised, I wanted to talk a little bit today about cervical mucus and ovulation because I touched on it in our Facebook group to this week about being able to identify ovulation. So the first thing I wanna say is ovulating is the main event of your cycle, okay? If you grew up like I did, you were told to track your period, which is a great start, but your period is the period of a sentence, right? The sentence being that all of these hormones during your cycle have to work together in order to number one, cause ovulation, and then number two, to build up the uterine lining. And then number three, to cause the shedding of the uterine lining in what we call a period if no pregnancy occurs. And so ovulation is the main event of your cycle. Everything is in your cycle and your womanly body is programmed to elevate the importance of ovulation because biologically, right, us women have this superpower of being able to create and carry human life and your body is situated towards procreation right and so of course women are amazing in a lot of other ways but if we realize that that this gift of fertility is a gift then we also realize that ovulation as the main event of our cycle is really important for our overall health so in another video we're going to talk about like how in the world do all of these hormones work together in your cycle to cause ovulation? But what I wanna talk about today in relation to ovulation is cervical mucus because it's something we don't talk enough about. And some of you might be familiar with cervical mucus um, from experience and others might not be. So let's just talk about that a little bit. So in general, there is a connection between your brain and your ovaries, right? Your brain and your ovaries need each other in order for you to have a cycle in the first place. So at the beginning, let's say at the beginning of a month, with the start of a period as the period ends, your brain is paying attention to your hormones. And when that period subsides, your, your brain is saying, we need to start a new cycle. So the brain sends a text message in the form of the hormone FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. And your ovary receives the message and it starts to grow follicles, right? And one of the follicles in your ovary will come to dominance. And that follicle that houses the egg, it's kind of like this outer, this nice outer shell for the egg on the inside, right? As it's growing, that follicle is producing increasing amounts of estrogen, okay? And your brain is watching. Your brain is watching for that increasing, those increasing levels of estrogen. When the brain sees the estrogen levels get to their highest level as that follicle is getting big and bulgy and that egg is like trying to come out, it's trying to ovulate, right? The brain sends another text message down there and it says, hey, it's time to ovulate. And that text message is in the form of the hormone, luteinizing hormone. So luteinizing hormone from the brain causes ovulation of the follicle so that that small egg that is growing can pop out and make its way into the fallopian tube, right? The event of that follicle releasing the egg is called ovulation, okay? There's lots of hormones going on around ovulation, but estrogen is the main hormone leading up until that point. After ovulation, that follicle that was housing the egg turns into something we call the corpus luteum. And the corpus luteum, now it's kind of a, Kind of a flattened follicle it's been transformed and its job is to secrete progesterone now i just said two hormones estrogen and progesterone right estrogen is kind of the hormone we're paying attention to prior to and leading up to ovulation progesterone is the hormone we're paying attention to after ovulation because your body that corpus luteum secretes progesterone estrogen builds up the lining of your uterus so that if a pregnancy occurs, right, it has a nice lush, thick uterus for it to burrow into. Progesterone maintains that lining and also makes it secretory. So lots of blood supply comes to that area, nourishing fluids, all of those things to make a nice cozy home for a possible um, baby to implant into the womb. Okay, so you see that these hormones are being produced by the body prepping for ovulation. And then after ovulation, you see that progesterone is produced. Okay, so that was a lot. Just talked about estrogen and progesterone. 
Okay, those are the two hormones I'm talking about. Estrogen and progesterone affect your cervix as well. Your cervix is very sensitive to estrogen and progesterone. And those hormones cause the cervix to secrete different types of mucus. So when progesterone is high in your cycle, the cervix will secrete dense, antimicrobial, anti-sperm mucus, right? And you usually can tell that you have progesterone dominant mucus when you're wiping from front to back before and after you go to the bathroom and you feel dryness, right? You wipe and it's dry and you look at the toilet tissue and there's not really anything on there. And then you try to like touch it with your finger and there's really not a whole lot to touch, right? That experience of dryness is usually telling you based on your cervical biomarker that progesterone is the dominant hormone in your cycle, okay? Now, when a follicle starts to grow in your ovary, the follicle, like I said before, produces increasing amounts of estrogen. Estrogen affects your cervix a little differently. Estrogen causes the cervix to start secreting fertile type mucus. And fertile type mucus is usually experienced, it's kind of a progression, when your cervix starts to turn on and it's producing fertile type mucus, most women experience a moist sensation when they're wiping, right? From front to back, they wipe and they're like, oh, ah, that felt a little moist compared to the dryness I felt yesterday, right? So that feeling of moistness as the estrogen increases will become increasingly more slippery feeling. The mucus itself will change from dryness to moistness. And then as your estrogen rises, you might look at the mucus, you wipe, it feels moist. And then you look at your paper and you see a little mucus on there and you touch it with your finger and it looks a little bit like lotion, right? Or like white Elmer's glue. And then you look at it between your fingers and you stretch it just a little bit and you see a little bit of stretch or it's a little tacky, right? As your estrogen rises, you start to notice it starts to stretch more and more, right? the color of it starts to change. It could be, it could be cloudy at first and it changed to, changes to clear. And then the sensation changes from dry when your progesterone is dominant to moist when your estrogen starts to rise. And then when your estrogen is really high, a lot of times women will feel a very slippery sensation when they wipe. So all that to say, your estrogen levels start to increase as a follicle is starting to grow in your ovary. Okay, when you near ovulation, that's when you notice, most women, I should say most, notice that their mucus is clear, stretchy, and slippery, right? One of those things, two of those things, all three of those things. So somebody like me, who's a trained professional in charting, basically, will look at your chart and we'll see a pattern of increasingly fertile mucus. You can identify ovulation, or you can likely identify ovulation when you see a change from that, all of that fertile mucus, all of a sudden to dryness, right? There's a change and it's usually pretty quick. Once you ovulate and your body starts producing progesterone because of the corpus luteum, you will see a change in your mucus from that clear stretchy lubricative usually to dry or less fertile as, it, as your estrogen declines and your progesterone increases. So that observation of increasingly fertile mucus and then a last day of clear stretchy mucus followed by a change to dryness is one good example of us being able to say, huh, ovulation is likely occurring. The second piece to that though, is that the corpus luteum, like I said, when that follicle collapses and it starts to produce progesterone, that corpus luteum should be progest producing progesterone long enough for that dryness after your peak day, we call it the last day of fertile mucus until the start of your next period. That's usually a span of between nine to 18 days if you're using FEM charting, okay? If you have that pattern of increasingly fertile mucus, and if the time after your peak day till the start of your next period, it's called the luteal phase, if that is between nine and 18 days, then we can look at your chart and say you likely ovulated during that cycle. You can only diagnose ovulation via ultrasound. So as 
an educator, what we say is you likely did based on your biomarkers, but I can't necessarily diagnose that. But we can look at your chart and see biomarkers that give us clues as to what's going on. So why is this important? Because ovulation is a sign of health. Ovulation signifies that all of your hormones before ovulation and your hormones that come after ovulation are working together, right? And hormones, as we know, it's not like you have estrogen that only affects your uterus. Estrogen affects your whole body. Progesterone affects your whole body, right? And so we can see that women who have hormonal imbalances have issues or problems or things coming up all over their body that are related to their reproductive hormones. So it's really important to be able to identify ovulation. The best way, the way I teach to identify ovulation is by charting cervical mucus. There's different ways to do that. Some people um, use the temperature method, which has come up in our chat a little bit. I don't teach the temperature method per se, um, but temperature in my mind is an adjunct to being able to identify. I think cervical mucus is the gold standard for being able to identify patterns of ovulation in your cycle. Adding temperature to the mix, that's a whole nother thing and we can talk about it at a further time. But basically a biomarker is a, what we call a sign of life, right? Biomarker, a life sign. And your cervical mucus is produced every day by your cervix. So it's a very reliable biomarker of what your hormones are doing. So I'm gonna show you a quick video of the changes in, of cervical mucus during the course of a month and the type of cervical mucus you would see leading up to ovulation. Um, I think this is really interesting. So here we go. So this first example is progesterone dominant mucus. It's dry, right? This woman wiped when going to the bathroom. If you look at the toilet paper, it might be a little bit shiny, but when she finger tests, there's nothing on it. And then we see a change. Estrogen starts to rise. This in fem speak is considered fertile mucus. And if you look at it, it has a little stretch right? And it looks a little more watery and it looks a little more pasty and a little bit creamy almost. This is an indication that estrogen is rising and you've entered your fertility window, right? As estrogen continues to rise towards ovulation, you start to see that mucus become increasingly clear, increase, increasingly stretchy and increasingly more slippery when you're wiping. So you see that. And then this last woman, this is what we call peak type mucus around the time of ovulation. Some women see this. This is a lot of mucus. Not everybody sees that much, but you see how clear, how stretchy, and you can imagine just looking at that, how slippery it would feel when wiping, right? So I have a lot of women in this group who are new to charting, never charted before. That's okay. My challenge for you is to start paying attention to your biomarkers, right? Just start paying attention. From now on, from today onward, I want you just, when you go to the bathroom, I want you to wipe front to back and think, what does that feel like, okay? Next thing, look at the paper. What does it look like? And then the third thing, touch it. What does it feel like on your fingers? Does it have any stretch to it, right? That's really important. Just try that, see what happens. See how your body is communicating to you during the month. Now I will say this, hormonal birth control and contraceptives changes the way that your mucus secretes mucus, your cervix secretes mucus. There's a huge change there because a lot of times there's synthetic hormones that cause your cervix to basically secrete only dense, dry mucus, right? It kind of takes away that fertile type mucus. So if you're on hormonal birth control, you won't see variations in your cervical mucus. If you are a naturally cycling woman, you will see variations or you should see variations in your cervical mucus during the month based on the hormone activity that's going on. Second thing I'll say is this, if you're of childbearing age, right? You're a full grown woman who has not yet entered perimenopause, then you should be ovulating. It would be abnormal if you are not ovulating. Cause like I said, ovulation is a sign of health and the hormones involved in our cycles affect everything about us our mental health, our body, our skin, right? Our moods, all of that. So ovulation tells us something about the hormone activity throughout your whole body. So it's really important to be able to understand if you're ovulating or not. We will get more into this. This was just like an introduction to hormones and 
how they affect your cervical mucus. We could get really crazy about this, but I will, with the caveat, tell you that this is stuff we cover in my course about charting, right? And you could scour Google for hours and hours and not find an easy way to do this. So um, if you're interested in charting, please reach out to me. Also, I wanna know what you guys are seeing during the month. If this is groundbreaking for you, please write in the comments and share with others because it's something we don't talk about all that much is how amazing our bodies are and how amazing those changes are in our cervical mucus. So please write some comments, write some questions. I would love to talk more about this with you guys and we'll be doing so the rest of the month. Thanks ladies.